What is up, guys? It's Galaxy Two again here, and uh, <coughs> today I'm bringing you the second part of my uh, my guide on how to make Pokemon teams. And today we're going to be uh, covering the idea of sweepers and such. So if we go into the team builder, I'll show you the uh, the showcased the showcased the uh, preset teams. They're not actually teams; they're just Pokemon that you can use that are sweepers. They're just it's just a team full of sweepers. That I'm trying to showcase the different sets and ways of utilizing them. Um, <laughs> Here we go, we'll finally get into this. Um, so, the main thing you want to consider when making a sweeper is, uh, again, remember when we were talking about the uh, defensive walls, you need to be looking at stats, um, you need to be looking at typings, and... Um, yeah, stats and typings, that's, that's that's the main sort of thing. So, obviously, if you've got a Pokemon with incredibly mediocre attack or special attack, they're not really going to be sweeping material. Um, uh, f let me, for example, Slurpuff. Um, let me see if I can quickly bring up Slurpuff on the uh, on this right here. If we go on to Slurpuff, we look at uh, Slurpuff's stats. They're incredibly mediocre across the board. Um, so you wouldn't no, you wouldn't have this as a sweeper, would you? You wouldn't have this as a sweeper. But um, this is also where sort of the rule of obsessions come in because if you get this thing in max attack, uh, positive nature. And then you have it unburden, and then you give it belly drum, which is right here. You can then realise that this thing's actually going to actually be quite potent if you can manage to set it up. I mean, uh, self off is a bit risky because you have to bring it in safely. But I'm saying that um, not only this is the third thing I meant to mention when I was saying not only you have to look at stats and uh, typings, you want to be looking at abilities and move pools as well. There's no point having a sweeper with absolutely zero offensive moves because it's just not going to work out. Um, for reference, see Kyra and Black, uh, a massive stat. Maybe we could get Kyra and Black up here as well. Um, this is gonna be a bitch and a half to edit. <laughs> I'm not good at this sort of thing. Kyra and Black, Kyra and Black. Look at that attack stat. Holy crap! You're like, I need this on my team. You're thinking, well, you look at his coverage, uh, physical moves. It's got Dragon Claw. It's got Fusion Bolt. I mean, it has no good form of. Ice, move, ice type stab. It has very poor coverage, very, a very shallow move pool to to pick from. Um, hence why Kyrian Black is not in Ubers. It's actually an underused right now. It's actually blacklisted nowadays uh, because of the recent bans. Um, but it was underused and it's now blacklisted. And last gen, I think it was blacklisted as well. Or was that just regular Kyra that's blacklisted? And this might have been OU. Regardless, it's there are there are many better Pokemon I feel that that other than Kyra and Black. Regardless of its massive stats, I mean, actually, to be fair, Choice Scarf Kyra and Black can be a threat. Same with Choice Banded, um, but it, it's a very small niche um, to have it fit into. But that's what I'm saying. So you don't want to cut yourself short when you're you're looking at move force. Anyway, let's jump into this. Um, the first Pokemon I'm going to look at is this Talonflame set right here. Um, for a start, I don't like using Talonflame. I think Talonflame is the most boringest thing to see ever, but I see it all the time, so I figured it might be worth <coughs> showcasing um, a set to use. This is not a very good set because I don't encourage anyone to use this sort of stuff because it is annoying as crap. Um, for a start, we have no item here. Uh, why is that? Because we're going to synergize with our first move. Our first part of our stab is going to be Acrobatics, and uh, if we look at Acrobatics, it power doubles if the user has no held item. Um, Therefore, Acrobatics is going to have a base uh, 110 attack, which is only 10 less base power than a Brave Bird and low recoil, so that's why I prefer to use Acrobatics. And plus, you get priority with your Gale Wings ability too. So, you're going to have priority Acrobatics, which is always nice. Um, second thing you've got here is a Flare Blitz, you know, your Fire Type Stab, high base power, high accuracy. Why not? It's going to be a really, really strong move. You're going to hit hard with it. This is what sweeps are all about. Um, secondly, we're going to look at U turn. Um, Secondly, it's thirdly. Can't count. Um, U-turn, it's sort of like um, a momentum gaining move. Uh, if you know you're going to force a switch by bringing, bringing in your Talonflame, you can uh, you can U-turn on the turn they are going to switch, and you can get some switch initiative and some uh, momentum going in the game. So U-turn's always a very nice uh, move to have on, uh, on certain sweepers and Pokemon. And then lastly, we have Roost here because uh, recoil damage sucks, and you might want to get some of that recoil damage back. And priority Roost is always nice. Um, for the um, for the stats here, um, this Talonflame is uh, running the uh, suggested spread, which is max attack and max speed with a plus speed nature. Um, I find this to be, you know, it's okay because um, you're gonna 
Well, I don't even know. I'm not a, a massive, uh, you know, knowledgeable. I'm not knowledgeable on speed tiers, but um, you're going to be able to outspeed those. Um, uh, just, I don't know the speed natures either, but the speedy natured um, Alakazams, Latiosis, things like that, that have got high speed to you, can be able to outspeed those sorts of things. If you're not too concerned about outspeeding those sorts of things, you can just run a, a plus attack nature. Um, but you can see here, Talonflame's attack stat is actually not that um, fantastic. It's mainly the fact it has priority on Brave Bird and things like that, which make it incredibly potent. Um, so to going back to the team, we're now going to look at this Conkledur set. Um, this is a set that I find quite interesting. Um, to be fair, uh, after I like organise this video, I feel that there's a better set to use on Conkledur, but it's just an idea. I'll tell about the other set in a second. This is uh, utilising the ability Guts to get a massive attack boost. If his Pokemon is status, his attack is 1.5 times, <coughs> and Burn's attack is ignored. So, for a start, you don't even have to run Toxic Orb on this. Um, I sometimes actually, in one of my teams, I actually run a Leftovers um, guts conkled there because I'll explain in a second. But essentially, you run the toxic orb here um, because it, it gets you status and then it boosts your attack. Um, obviously, if you want to be keeping your conkled there, if you imagine your conkled will be in for a long time, then you're going to want to run a flame orb. If you think you're just going to be bringing it in and out, in and out, you want to do toxic orb because the first turn of toxic only does six percent and then it racks up to twelve, eighteen, blah 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 blah, gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But flame orb constantly does twelve percent. So if you're going to bring it in for a turn, take six and go out. You can see that the Toxic Orb is going to be more effective for that sort of play. <coughs> to be fair, there probably should be a Flame Orb because um, I don't really switch out my Conkle that often. But and then and then for moves, you just kind of have you want to have your um, type of stab moves. Um, Drain Punch here is my main form of stab to get some recovery to do with the Toxic Orb damage. I've got priority here on the form of Mac Punch because if you look at Conkle's stats, they are very slow he's very slow but you can look at his massive attack which is why everyone loves to use him and he's got massive hp as well so he can he can survive the uh, longevity of toxics and even um taking attacks as well um <coughs> but his speed stat is very poor so he needs the priority to be able to actually um out speed some things it's not really outspeeding but out prioritying things and uh taking things down and then finally we have earthquake here for coverage uh, along with stone edge earthquake and stone edge combo is a very good coverage um set because if you think about it um all the different types that you can eliminate with these two moves is is quite a few especially the types that are most prevalent in ou such as flying um ice types things like that um and the side of earthquake you can take out the steel rocks uh, fire, even with Stone Edge, take fire, but I'd go with Earthquake because more accurate. You know what I mean? You, these, this combo of uh, typings is very good for cl clearing the board. You know, there's not a lot you're not going to be able to hit with these two types <coughs> of moves. And um, this is also what we'd call a bulky sweeper. And you can see here, bulky sweeper, blah, blah, blah. Because you're not counting on your speed. Unlike Talonflame, who counts on his speed to be effective at sweeping, Conkledur is in fact using his uh, massive HP to be able to tank hit and then retaliate with massive force. Um, here we have a Dragonite. This is what I would um, uh, define as a late game sweeper. Um, I'll tell you why soon when I've finished describing the moveset. But you can see we're running what we're leftovers. Why are we running leftovers on a sweeper? Why are we not running Life Orb or some other offensive type of item? Reason being, um, you want to be uh, uh, you want to be synergizing well with your ability, which is multi-scale, which means you you um, do not take uh, you take half damage when you're at full HP. So you could take an Ice Beam essentially at max HP and still live. That's what makes Dragonite such a potent um, uh, potent what am I saying? A potent uh, late game sweeper because uh, you can pretty much bring it in on anything as long as it's max HP. There's no rocks on the field, and you can take out any of his remaining pokes, which you would assume by the late game are very low in HP. Also, um, so the, looking at the moves here, we have earthquake and fire punch for coverage. I take fire punch uh, just for Ferrothorns because they're evil and need to be murdered or murderized, derised, derised. Um, outrage here for the, um, you know, when you want to clear the field very quickly, you're forced into you get forced into Outrage or you need to Outrage to kill things, you know, nothing's going to want to switch into a Dragonite Outrage. And then the main um, thing that's different between this set and the other sets is this setup move here, which is Dragon Dance. Um, so when you're considering late game sweepers, uh, you want to be able to imagine that in the late game, you're going to have weakened the opponent's team to the point where you can probably bring in something like this Dragonite in and set up a Dragon Dance pretty safely 
Uh, regardless, you have multi-scale to allow you to set up a Dragon Dance, and at which point you can then sweep the rest of his team because they're on such low HP, they can't really do anything about it. So that's the idea of here of the late game sweepers. You want to preserve them till the late game. Dragon uh, Dragonite is very good at this because of the multi-scale. It can remain, it can switch in to almost anything and survive, and uh, then set up a DD and continue to sweep by outspeeding everything. Um, I decided in this video to include some Mega Evolutions. I probably should have included some Mega Evolutions in my uh, defensive warp uh, video, but um, when I come to video 3 there will be some Mega Evos in the team. But um, if you wanted to run a Mega Sweeper, this is a, a good example, and I love Mega uh, Pinsir. I mean, Pinsir was one of my favorite Pokemon uh, <coughs> from um, that I wanted to use in Gen 5, and I was breeding one, but I never actually got around to it, to finishing it or anything, because Gen 6 was already out. Anyway, <laughs> shows you how uh, prepared I was. Um, so you obviously item, duh, you want to run Pinsir, right, because otherwise you're not going to be able to Mega Evolve. Um, the good thing about Megas is you can switch them into knockoffs, you know, you've got all the knockoff users running around Bisharp and Mandibuzz and other pokes, so you, and uh, Mega Stones cannot be knocked off, so you, you're safe in that respect. Um, the ability, I mean, you could run any ability, but you might as well be running Moxie, because if you can, what you could do is bring in Scissor, um, not Scissor, Pinsir, bring in Pizzer, Pizza, fucking hell, <laughs> bring in Pinsir, man, and um, you might be able to get the finishing blow on one of the opponent's pokes with a quick attack, or just being able to outspeed in general, uh, at which point you... Um, <coughs> You could uh, get a Moxie boost, and then the, the following turn, you could Mega Evolve, and uh, you have plus one attack, and you live from the Moxie, and then you have Mega Evolve to get the Aerial Eight ability. Um, so now we look at the move pool. We've got Exes for Stab, Quick Attack for Stab, um, which we'll explain in a second, Close Combat for Coverage, and then Thrash. Um, I kind of never really use Thrash on Mega Scissor. I think I run normally run Earthquake for Coverage too, uh, but Thrash I find quite interesting. Uh, combination with the aerial ability for you those who don't know I'm sure everyone knows if they're watching this and are mildly interested in competitive battling uh, Pinsir when he mega evolves gains a new ability called aerial eight and it pretty much converts all um, normal type moves into flying type moves um, and adds a small uh, I think it's 1.2 times buff to them so um, mega Pinsir is actually part of flying type as well so essentially using quick attack uh, you get 40 base power with the 1.2 times um, buff which I couldn't tell you how much it is because I'm really bad at maths I think it's something like 5 or something so like 5 base power I don't know it's not a great deal uh, but you also so not only do you gain the aerial eight boost though you also gain a um, stab boost uh, from the move as well uh, so you got stab and aerial eight boost quick attack which makes it a very strong priority I think it makes it just less than extreme speed if I'm correct it might be 10 to 20 base power just below uh, extreme speed or it might be just about extreme speed but it's very strong especially for a priority attack um, and that also works with thrash so you're gonna have a very strong uh, outrage flying type outrage essentially which is gonna be very strong uh, as far as the EVs are concerned uh, you could run a max speed Pinsir, um, that's definitely viable. I don't know the uh, the base speed of Mega Pinsir, but um, you would be able to outspeed a few things if you made it a uh, Jolly Nature <coughs> Pinsir, which is a plus speed nature. Um, but however, I choose to run the max HP because um, I have priority in the form of Quick Attack. So, and I you do most of your sweeping with Quick Attack. I'm not gonna lie. And if you need to, you can also tank some hits. Um, so that's the the Mega. Uh, sweeper covered. Um, we haven't even got to special ones yet, damn. Uh, we got here uh, one of my favorite sets to run. You can also do this sort of thing with a um, Mega Heracross also has the skill link ability so you can make similar movesets but you can't really uh, you'd have to smash and pass. You couldn't do this moveset on its own. But anyway, we're going to run White Herb. White Herb restores all lowered stat changes to zero when uh, one is less than zero. So if you get a negative stat, it's restored pretty much. Uh, and this works well with sm Shell Smash because you're going to boost your attack, special attack and speed by two, which means you're going to outspeed mostly everything on the field. I mean, not a lot's going to outspeed a plus two uh, poke. And then you lower your defense and special defense by one stage. So uh, and your White Herb will be consumed and will... Um, restore your defense and special defense for you. Um, <coughs> so 
Then you've got your skill link ability, which means uh, any multi-hitting attacks will always hit their maximum number of times, i.e. five times. So here we have Icicle Spear for Stab, which will hit two to uh, five times, but obviously because we're running skill link, it will hit five times, and 25 times five is like 125, perhaps. Uh, if I had to think about it, I could probably work that out. Yes, 125. Um, which is, you know, that's quite a, a high base power move. It's what well, five base power stronger than Thrash or Outrage or something, so it's a very strong move. Um, same goes for Rock Blast, but the accuracy is slightly lower. And then you have just Razor Shell here, just for um, water type stab and coverage, because there's no water type uh, multi hitting move. The only two multi hitting moves Cloyster can learn is Ice Cold Spear and Rock Blast. Um, Heracross can actually learn Arm Thrust, Pin Missile, Bullet Seed, and Rock Blast, so it has better coverage. Then Cloyster, and um, but obviously Cloyster has the advantage of being able to smell shell smash itself and get the boosts where Heric uh, Heracross would need to maybe get a Moxie boost as normal Heracross, Heracross, or get some other boosts by uh, Baton passing. <coughs> and then if you look at the um, the uh, stats uh, here, you can see that Cloyster is a tax that is reasonable, but it's not as high as someone like Conkledurs or Dragonites or even Pincers. Um, but you can see that the reason it's a viable sweeper is because it, of its move pool this time. The fact that it can shell smash and then you know and then rape face with its uh, boosted stats. And then the speed stat is also also terrible, but it's going to outspeed almost everything because it's going to be running plus two, and that's like 480 nearly 478 speed when you've uh, shell smashed and you can also pretty much take any hit you would like with your defense because you've got 180 base defense i think that's the same defense as mega titar so you're not even a mega and you've got that massive defense stat so you can hit take hits you can pretty much switch into a physical attacker and then set up in their face because they're not going to be able to touch cloister because of how massive his stat, uh, defense stat is so, so cloister is a lot easier to set up than someone say um here, no one on here really needs setting up, but Cloyster is very easy to set up with, is what I'm saying. He's a very good late game sweeper as well because of the raw power he has. He can just come in, shell smash, and then clear the field. Um, when the defensive Pokemon are down, that's when you're going to want to start bringing your late game sweepers. That's what I would. That's the one thing I probably should have mentioned when I was talking about Dragonite late game sweeping. Obviously, an uh, Outrage is not going to be able to sweep a team if he's got still got his Theraphorn about, you know what I mean? Because the Theraphorn can just tank the hits and then you're just left confused. So you want to be considering using your late game sweepers when the defensive walls are down. And until then, conserve them as best you can. And now this is going to be um, an interesting set. Um, weakness policy is a very good item. I really love this item. I run it on Aegislash 2, which is very fun. Uh, you can run it on this Sceptile set and uh, there's also other sets. But... Um, this is where you want to um, have synergy between items, abilities, <coughs> and the poke. So, um, Sceptile, as you can see, is an incredibly frail poke, very low base defense, it's a very high speed, and a uh, reasonable attack stat, which is uh, what you're going to be using here mainly. Um, the idea behind this set is uh, you come in to play, you, s you come into, say, you, s you sacrifice your pincer, and uh, the enemy has a talent flame, and you're going to bring in your Sceptile now, uh, fresh switch into Sceptile. The Talonflame is obviously going to one-shot you because it's Talonflame, but what you do is you go for Endure. The Talonflame goes for Brave Bird, takes you down to 1 HP and activates your weakness policy, right? This weakness policy gives you plus 2 attack and plus 2 special attack, so you could be running a mixed Sceptile if you wanted to. This one's actually just completely physical because I prefer Sceptile's physical move coverage than its special move coverage. Um, then this will, in turn, activate your unburden ability, doubling your speed stat, which gives you something like 680 uh, speed. <coughs> Coupled with plus 2 f with your attack stat, that's now like 500, more than 500, nearly nearly 600. Was it 590 attack stat with this weakness policy? Uh, and now you're going to be able to outspeed, actually, to be fair, with Talonflame it's not a good example because Talonflame would just use priority Brave Bird and kill you regardless. But if it wasn't Talonflame, <laughs> which is why I hate Talonflame, because Priority Blade Bird is too, too strong, man. It ruins these in, in creative sets people have. Anyway, so you've used Endure, 1 HP, boost, boost, boost. You're going to outspeed everything now unless they've got priority. And then you've got Leaf Blade, Rock Slide, and Acrobatics to use to um, 
to sweep with. So that's an interesting set you can use. Personally, weakness policy will also work on Dragonite because you can come in on a, an ice attack, uh, take it with multi-scale, and then get the weakness policy boost to come back and sweep. And you'd obviously be running at uh, extreme speed on, in that case to make sure you outsped things. <clears throat> so that's the uh, the physical sweeping end. Uh, to be fair, special sweepers are very very similar. Um, it's, the only difference is, is that uh, you're running different pokes because their special stats are different. So let's start with Latios. Here I'm going to showcase a different type of set, which would be a four attack set with a choice item. Um, you're going to be it's kind of down to one user's preference and two which Pokemon you're running. For example, um, this Latios here, its speed stat is wow. 110, I mean only a few things can outspeed this, uh, even with a plus nature, which is why you run plus nature uh, with the Latios, but you could, I mean, you could might be able to find something that could outspeed it with plus nature if you weren't running plus nature. But, you I mean, the only thing, things in the uh, metagamer that are going to outspeed you are priority and things like Alakazam and... Alakazam? I can't think of anything else. Holucha, I think, will outspeed you. Talonflame will, but Talonflame's got priority anyway, so fuck Talonflame. Um, and so, essentially, you've also got a massive special attack stat here, 130, which is crazy good. Regardless, slap a choice specs on there. That's an extra, that's a plus one in your special attack stat as you switch in, which is really good. And um, you give it a Draco Meteor and Psyshock for coverage. Psyshock is a very nice move on Latios because it means you can hit uh, special walls on the physical end and then like rape face and then you've got energy ball and ice beam for coverage so choice items can be quite interesting you could be running choice scarf latios but maybe that's not as good as idea as choice specs i mean it's definitely reasonable it's not a bad idea but um you've already got you've already got a very good speed stat that is not very gonna you're not gonna get out sped by anything unless it's scarfed as well um but scarf is also viable it's not it's not i'm not saying it's bad but <clears throat> personally i prefer specs because it's just me. Anyway, then we can come into this Tojakiss edit, which I didn't actually give an item because I'm freaking stupid. I think I anticipate this to me for me to explain different items you could put on this Togekiss, which is what I'm going to end up doing now because I made these teams ages ago and now I'm finally making the video, but shut up, Dan. Let's carry on. Anyway, so here we're running Serene Gaze Togekiss. Um, so Togekiss is a very good poke this gen because it's got the fairy typing and can... Uh, slay those dragons. So you're going to be running Air Slash, Aura Sphere, and Dazzling Gleam uh, to stab, and then coverage move here at Aura Sphere to take care of those silly Theraforms that will come in on your um, Togekiss to tank it out or something. Uh, and then finally, Nasty Plot is very nice because if you could bring it in to force a switch on, say, an outraging Garchomp or an outraged Garchomp or someone thing that's clearly going to drop a Draco Meteor like a Choice Specs Latios, if you know it's Choice Specs, you can bring it in. Uh, be immune to the Draco, set up a nasty plot on the switch, etc, etc, etc. And you're going to be very strong with these uh, these coverage moves here. And then Serene Grace here also increases the chance of getting the secondary effective in attack. So for example, Air Slash, you're going to get a 60% chance to flinch. Um, and that's it, actually. The rest don't have any bonus moves. You could possibly find better moves here that could be used Serene Grace more. And in terms of items, you have choices here. You could be running Leftovers to make the Togekiss a bit more long-lived um, or you could be running life orb so your togekiss uh, deals tons more damage um, I wouldn't recommend choicing this because you're not going to have to use nasty plot of your choice because you'll be choiced into nasty plot so mm, kind of a bad idea or you could be running expert belt to bluff the um, the choice <coughs> the choice time if they see you do super effective damage and they're like oh maybe that's choice damage but it's actually not you're just expert belted because there's no life orb recoil you did. They didn't see life orbs, so they think, oh, maybe he's choice because of how much damage I did. No, it's just the expert belt, which does super effective damage. So you can use that to, to, to bluff a choice uh, scarfed or specs Pokemon. And uh, in case of IVs for this one, um, I mean, I mean EVs, uh, this was pretty obvious that you're going to be wanting to run in speed and a special attack because you want to abuse the fact that this thing's fucking fast. But this one, <laughs> speed's kind of very mediocre, but the HP stat is quite good, so you're going to be wanting want to run max uh, HP on this one because you've got good natural bulk on the de both defense and special defense so you're going to be able to take some hits at least um, so yeah there's a difference between bulky and speedy sweepers. Alakazam very nice Pokemon as you can see it's in a speed tier of its own it has a 120 base speed I'm not entirely sure of anything that really outspeeds it bar Talon of Flame I think maybe Thunderous Therian or something crazy like that might I can't remember uh, not very good with speed tiers um, 
<clears throat> so you're going to be wanting Rack Speed because, you know, you're going to outspeed everything in the meta game, even... No, I won't say that. And then <laughs> you're going to be running Max um, Special Attack. You're incredibly frail, so you're going to get one shot by pretty much everything. That's why you run Focus Shafts on Alakazam. It cannot be broken by uh, Entry Hazards because you have Magic Guard ability. This Pokemon is going to be damaged by Direct Attacks, not by Stealth Rocks, not by Spikes or anything like that. So your Sash will always be intact. And it is incredibly good in the late game to have a sashed Alakazam because say they've got a freaking Azumarill, you've let it get up a belly jar and you're like, oh god, there's now belly jar Azumarill sitting in my face. Um, he's got half HP because of belly drum, but he's just aquajetted your entire team and killed them all out. You bring in your your focus sash Alakazam, sash doesn't break from the stealth rocks, you take the aqua jet, live on one HP, retaliate with the psychic and kill the Azumarill. So Alakazam with his focus sash is very, very potent. And then you, you're just running um, Dazzling Gleam, Psychic for Stab, Shadow Ball and Focus Blast are very all very good coverage moves. Shadow Ball is very good for countering your obvious switchings to like a ghost or ghost type or something. Focus Blast to do with dark types or just, you know, coverage against steel, rock and things. And Dazzling Gleam here as well because it's good coverage. <coughs> Two, if uh, I haven't made it, if it's not like clear what coverage is and you're not a very avid Pokemon player then coverage is essentially a, a, a move of a different type that is super effective against more things so if you could just run all psychic type moves for stab but what's the point because you're not going to be able to hit a variety of different pokes if someone brings in like a uh, mighty yenna which is dark type you're not going to hit it but if you're on focus blast you can deal with dark types because you've got the coverage for it anyway <laughs> regardless here we come into another late game sweeper late game in air quotes uh, i didn't ev this one because i you know it's going to be max speed okay this is actually suggesting running physically defensive Volcarona hmm maybe it's because my moveset is very bad um, I probably would have ran max special attack max speed but whatever I obviously have got a very specially def uh, defensive Volcarona now um, you're going to be what you got Quiver Dance here as your setup move the same sort of idea with the um, Dragon Dance or Nasty Plot with Togekiss um, Fiery Dance is a very nice um, fire move that Volcarona gets access to. It's slightly weaker than Flamethrower uh, and definitely weaker than Fire Blast, but it's more accurate and has a 50% chance to boost your special attack. So as you're using it, you might even get a boost, which is very, very, very good. Uh, Bug Buzz here for Dual Stab and then Roost here. Um, why do I run Roost? Uh, you don't have to use Roost. Um, you could use another move, uh, another coverage move, maybe such as... Giga Drain? <laughs> Giga Drain's quite nice actually, or Hidden Power maybe. Uh, but uh, I run Roost because I'm often concerned for Stealth Rocks, and <clears throat> you might need to bring it in without having to get a chance to spin away rocks or defog rocks, and then Roost will be help help you um, maintain your healthiness. And that's why I also I've got Leftovers here to try and prolong the life. It's kind of like the token case where you could run Life Orb or Leftovers. Volcarona, I choose Leftovers because you're incredibly weak to Stealth Rocks with the Bug Fire typing. Volcarona literally isn't as good as it once was. It's not as potent because of Stealth Rocks and, you know, there are just things that deal, like, survive the metagame better uh, than Volcarona, like Latios, because Latios is cool. And then finally, this is the Mega... Um, in this section, we got uh, Mega Lucario running Lucario Knight for the to get the Mega Evolution. Uh, you could run any ability on this Lucario. You could, I mean, all of them are pretty one useless because you're probably not even going to get a chance to. I mean, you could. You don't really want to be running Justified because you're a special Lucario. You don't want to. You could run Steadfast, but a chance of you getting flinched are very low, and then you might as well run Inner Focus because if it just eliminates the chance to get flinched, which is annoying. You know, you don't want to get Serene Grace Toga kissed into flinching or Jirachi or something. So, in this, so you've got um, Aura Sphere for stab and not missing ever. Vacuum Wave for priority stab. Um, Flash Cannon here as well for stab. And then Nasty Plot here to set up because Mega Lucario will often force switches because it's how much of a threat it is to the um, to Pokemon in the metagame. So you often be able to set up a nasty plot, or even just bring in a set up a nasty plot in something's face, because sometimes you can do that. And then if you just look at the um, the spread, you can just see, you know, max speed, max special attack, and you'll get the boosts as well as you mega revolve. So I'm hoping that that was somewhat informative um, to people, and hoping this was a somewhat useful video. If uh, you like the video, please leave a like. 
And uh, just to summarize and recall, recall everything we've gone over, um, try and look for uh, Pokemon with good coverage moves, like Earthquake Stone Edge. Uh, try and find ways to synergize with your Pokemon's ability if it has the opportunity to, like a Guts, Conkledur, Skill Link, Cloyster, um, and Unburdened Sceptile or something like that. Um, and uh, try to um, consider. I forgot what I was going to say. I'll try and consider the late game as well. You might want to bring a sweeper who you know you can reliably bring it, bring in later on. That's fast. That can easily deal with um, the remaining pokes on a team, such as a dragon dancing, uh, dragonite, or maybe a um, nasty plotting togekiss, something like that. But uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching, guys. Um, I'll be bringing you the third video sometime soon about team synergy and team compositions, etc., etc. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.